Welcome back everyone. This week I am taking a break from painting to actually talk about a subject I'm very interested in. We're going to talk about mediums, specifically the five mediums that I like to keep on hand for very specific purposes. I get asked a lot about what I mix my paints with, how much do I add to them, and do I need mediums for my paints? So we're going to kind of cover some of those questions as we go through these in no particular order. A lot of people ask me about Lamy and Medium and if I use it. The answer is it kinda. Uh, I generally use this material which is basically an acrylic binder with no pigment in it to get my washes to work the way I want them to, specifically the Citadel shades. They tend to have a very dry matte look and have a coffee staining issue. So when I do thin out my paints, uh, or as far as my shades go, I like adding a little bit of Lamy and Medium to it. Now is it a great thinner? Not by itself, I usually add a little bit of water. So I'm going to do a three part state, or a three part test here. And the first part, I'm going to apply some Agrax Earthshade directly to a white primed mini. And then I'm going to follow up by mixing in a little bit of water to our Agrax, and then finally adding a little bit of Lamy and Medium to the Agrax and the water. So right now, you can see I've got some straight up Agrax Earthshade loaded up onto my brush, and I'm just going to brush it on the back of this Dark Angel Terminator. So you can see how it applies just straight out of the bottle. Now it's been decanted into a dropper bottle instead of a traditional Citadel pot, but nothing else has been added to my shades. I like to keep them as straight as possible so I can add uh, water or mediums later without, you know, having to go back, which you can't. So for this next step, I'm actually adding just a little bit of water, about a drop or two. And then I will do the same exact thing to the next Terminator in line. Myself and some others have noticed that usually tap water seems to add a little bit of something to Citadel shades. So sometimes it can be a little bit off-putting, but the main thing that I'm trying to avoid here with the next step by adding just a drop of Lamy and Medium to the mix of water and Agrax or shade is to really keep that pigment in the shade from breaking, meaning that I've added too much water or I've spread it too thin and the pigment itself begins clumping up and actually causing some weird effects on the surface of the model, usually splotching, coffee staining, uh, graininess. There's a number of number of symptoms that you'll want to avoid and hopefully this acrylic binder will solve that for us. So here we are brushing that on. And after we brush this on, I'm going to give this some time. In fact, I'm going to give this a uh, few minutes here. We'll count it down. And after 14 minutes of dry time, let's take a look at our results. So our first marine with just the Agrax or shade applied directly looks something like this. You might notice a little bit of clumping, a little bit of coffee staining here. You can see that on the shoulder especially and where it's pulled away from the edges just a little bit. And you can see how the pigments has even gathered a little bit on certain flat areas. Now this is the Agrax Earthshade mixed with water, and this actually turned out much worse. You can actually see it's pretty grainy. This is indicating that the shade itself is broken pigment-wise, and that's not what we want. Again, coffee staining around the edges. The final application, it's a little bit out of frame here, but you can see a much better improvement on the thinning and the clumpiness or, you know, just chunkiness of the pigment itself. In the application we do have a little bit of pulling around the edges but it's a much more even application this is a really good way to use Lamy and medium and shades to get a tint 
over a color rather than just a recessed shade or to help avoid a little bit of that coffee staining. Uh, again, we have a little bit right there, so you do have to be careful and it might benefit from multiple applications. For the next bit of this demonstration of mediums that I enjoy, we're going to play around with some inks, specifically Inktense Blue from Scale Color. Scale Color makes some very pigment rich inks and they are fun to play around with. Now one of the things that you do have to keep in mind with inks is that they have a very long dry time, so we're actually going to play around with that a little bit with Airbrush Thinner. Now it's made for an airbrush, but that just means it's a bit thinner in consistency and doesn't require any extra water, but we can totally use the same medium as a brush on. It has the same basic effects no matter whether it's being airbrushed or just brushed on. Now, on the other hand, one of the things that I like to keep on hand, but more of a uh, specialty item here, is slow dry. This is a drying retardant, and this keeps your paints from literally drying too quickly. It also has the really interesting effect of letting you use your acrylic paints and reactivate them on the model fairly easily so this is something that's fun to use with uh, various wet blending techniques and two brush blending etc so i've added a drop of the ink here one for each test that we're going to perform here first of all right in the middle i'm going to put some airbrush thinner i don't know why i started in the middle but i did we're going to add just a drop to that so it's basically a one-to-one -one mix here if you are curious that's about where I like to mix my thinner and flow improver. Now this is the slow dry. I'm going to add just about the same over here. Maybe a little bit more than the ink, but relatively the same. And a bit of just tap water for a nice control. So you can see how this ink dries in various ways. All right, just getting started here. Let's go ahead and break out some more of those terminators and try it out here. So the first terminator we're hitting with the ink tense blue just mixed with a little bit of water as kind of a control. You can actually see just as I'm starting to apply this how the pigment pulls away from the edges. It really kind of pulls up so that water is kind of drawing everything together including the ink. So you can see how that's even just starting to dry before it's even started to dry. The next one we'll take on is the airbrush thinner. Now remember I said this should speed up the drying time and this will help us out with our inks. Inks tend to take quite a while to fully dry and cure. So we're actually going to need to wait a little bit after this. And if you've noticed, the pigment seems very, very even on this entire stroke. It's not really pulling away from the edges all that much. Let's see how that works in the end. Now our third control is going to be the slow dry and this is going to be a little bit different because slow, slow dry does not act as a surfactant and I do have a video covering surfactants including flow, improver, and thinner and part of the reason that I normally use surfactants is to make sure that the pigment evenly spreads kind of like what we just saw with the thinner but as you can see here I'm even having to go back for multiple brush loads of this just to get coverage on this one panel so the slow dry while it does affect the dry time does not act as a surfactant you might need to add something else in there but it does have some other interesting effects and we'll see that at the very end We're going to give these three just over 30 minutes worth of dry time, just to make sure everything is really locked in.
All right, let's see how our experiment fared. So there's very noticeable differences between all three of these on the models just at a glance. We're going to start with the blue ink and water here on the left. You can see a lot of staining, a lot of tearing here, so the, the ink itself really kind of splotched up and the water really broke it. So even though this is a very pigment dense ink, it still broke. Now if we look at the thinner, we have a very, very even layer. Uh, everything's run into the recesses and pigment has kind of pulled up closer to the recesses around raised objects. Now, here's where we have the slow dry by itself, and you notice the pigment itself has clumped up quite a bit, but it's a little bit of a trick of the light. Sometimes inks are a bit shiny, but this isn't completely dry, and with just a little bit of water, I can actually reactivate the ink. This is one of the really cool things about slow dry. It makes it very, very easy to keep working acrylics and certain kinds of paints after the fact. So I could re-even this. I could even go back in and add a little bit of thinner or flow improver if I felt like it, or kind of blend it in with another color, whether an ink or paint. That is the benefit of slow dry. So between all three of these, one of my most common things I'd use is going to be thinner, just to get that nice even coat. One of the things I wanted to point out here was also the way that the inks actually just dried in the tray that I had them in. Here's the water, and you notice it has a nice thick meniscus on it, it hasn't flowed out too much. Here's the thinner, it's actually spread out, it has a very low meniscus, and kind of in between the slow dry, it's just got a slight meniscus. Yeah, I really like the looks of that middle one. All three of these are still somewhat wet at this point. Let's keep moving. Next one up, matte medium. It's one of my favorite fixers. There are certain paints, inks, washes, etc., that really leave a glossy look to things. Uh, a really good example is Vallejo model color has a much flatter appearance than Vallejo game color, and sometimes they don't mix well together when you're used on the same model. So what we're gonna do here is actually show off one of the shinier things I encounter which is Secret Weapon. Uh, their washes come out quite shiny by themselves and really beg me to add a little bit of matte medium into the mix. So for this particular demo, I'm gonna use some of the purple wash from Secret Weapon. And here we go, we'll just add a little bit of this medium. Now this is very thick and this is gonna require some water to actually mix in properly. So I'm gonna add water to the first drop and I'm gonna add water plus matte medium to the second droplet. So even when wet, you can see the matte medium's had an effect. Matte medium does a couple of things to knock down the luster, including adding a little bit of additive to the paint to just kind of reduce the ability for it to reflect and refract light. So let's see what this looks like on a couple of our terminators.
So you may have noticed that I shifted these about halfway through the drying process. I had to dry them for almost twice as long as I expected. On the left is water plus wash, and on the right is the wash with the matte medium included. You'll notice that the finish is a little bit different, and even the matte medium has acted as a bit of a surfactant, and the pigment is more evenly distributed. So both effects, less luster and a nice surfactant effect, come along with that medium. Very handy for things that dry shiny or look wet after the fact. Also of interest, here are the drying puddles, and this is after an hour. You'll notice the matte medium, you can see that mattness really kind of show up in the drying on a transparent plastic, whereas the other one still just looks kind of wet and shiny. Whether I'm using an airbrush or not, one of my favorite things to have on hand is Flow Improver. Now you may be using just normal Flow Improver, meant for brush on paint, or you can use Airbrush Flow Improver, either or. They are a surfactant for thinning down paints, such as this Golden Brown. Now Golden Brown, I found, has a bit of an issue with getting a bit uh, dry looking, chunky looking. The pigment kind of gathers up a little bit. And we're going to take a look at what happens between using water and a little bit of Flow Improver here on the drying. Just like with the previous demonstrations, we're going to take a little bit of water, tap water, and put that into one drop, and then into the other droplet. We're going to add a little bit of our airbrush flow improver, mix them up, use separate brushes, and apply them to our minis in the same fashion that we did with the others. I'm going to try to slap this paint on as quickly as possible and get it to drying. I'm going to use the shoulders on these terminators with a little bit of detail here to show this off and hopefully we get a nice looking result at the end. Alright, the terminator on the right has flow improver mixed in with its golden brown and on the left just a little bit of water. And you'll notice that even the look of the two, while wet, is a little bit different. Let's see how long it takes to dry. And after about 30 minutes of dry time, this is what we have. Now, I don't have a rotation of this, but what you may notice is that the Flow Improver has a bit more of an even tone, although it did pull away in a little bit right near the bottom of the rosarius. The 
one with just water and paint, if you look real closely, has a bit of a grain to it. So I noticed some of the pigment clumped up just a smidge, so we actually managed to break the paint a bit on it. So while this one's not as visually distinctive, it may be more distinctive when you're working with the paint or after a full dry and varnish. So what does all this mean? Uh, that's a great question. The, the biggest thing is uh, it doesn't mean a whole lot. There are a lot of mediums, a lot of additives, a lot of options out there, and it really just depends on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. Different brands have different effects, and really whatever works for you is best. So do I mix mediums with my paints? Yes, I do, but about 90% of the time it's just a little bit of water. Unless it's my airbrush, it's a lot of flow improver. Uh, also, do you need mediums? Not necessarily. Uh, you can go your entire career without using anything but water. And additionally, there's no real magic ratio of water or additives or mediums to add to your paints. It's all a kind of trial and error and what you feel most comfortable with to get the result that you want. I'd love to know what your top additives are. If you have anything different or disagree or agree, list them out in the comments down below. And next week I'll be back with another video. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great week.